man, working all day trying to get this uh, thing on Kepler's laws of motion and Galileo together. It's just been a long day. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. Maybe a little coffee. I, I am just exhausted. They're really cool. Ah, Galileo! I am Kepler! No! Yes! No! Yes, I am your no! father! No! No! Ah! Mathematics! No! Ah! Oh, wow, is that a nightmare or what? Me and Mr. Stalblin dueling it out with lightsabers on the Death Star, thinking that we're Kepler and Galileo, and making the world safe forever in the universe with planetary motion. Oh, was that ever a great, great dream. Or some might think that was a, could have been a nightmare. Or me and Mr. Stahl are just a couple of nerds. So I think we'll use that idea and we'll run with it. Well, we're back here at the uh, Cave of Science and we're going to look at uh, Kepler's uh, laws of uh, planetary motion. And the first one we're going to look at is uh, his first law. And we this is really what we did in class the other day. And I'm going to draw an ellipse in here. Probably not a real good one, but we'll give it a whirl. And something on that order. And if you remember, we put a couple pins in, and those were our, our foci. And if we're going to look at, since this is a planetary orbit, one of the foci must be the sun. And I'm just going to pick this one. From here, we uh, well, we learned some uh, couple things here. And one is what the, the major axis is. And the major axis goes through the foci all the way to the either side of the ellipse. And then the semi-major axis was perpendicular. And then it bisected the distance between the foci. So this was the major axis. And this one up here was a semi-major. And we also learned a couple, couple terms on an orbit as it pertains to uh, the distance from the sun. And those terms that we learned were perihelion. So this is the perihelion. perihelion and this is the point closest to the Sun in the planet's orbit so this planet is orbiting around and the point farthest from the Sun was called the aphelion interesting to note that we are really approaching the perihelion in the Earth's orbit but again it's the tilt of the Earth that gives us our uh, our seasons and so we had the perihelion, which is a point closest, and the aphelion, which was the point farthest away. And then we have the major axis, which goes through the, the two foci, and the semi-major axis, which is that bisector. The other thing we learned how to do was to calculate eccentricity. Eccentricity. or how oval shape, if you will, that the, uh, that the uh, planet's orbit is. You got me remember now, the eccentricity, uh, most planets are slightly elliptical. So really we're thinking of an ellipse here. And a, the eccentricity of a circle, if you remember from the activity, equals zero. That's because both of the foci, really there's only one and it's right in the middle. But we learned how to calculate the eccentricity of an ellipse by taking the length, length of major axis Oh, got to go. I'm going to do that backwards so I better get this out of here. We took the old, we took the distance between the foci, distance between foci, 
and we divided it by the length of the major axis. That's one step ahead of myself. Length of major axis. Well, let's just take, I think we uh, in class we had the distance uh, between the foci, I think it was uh, about five centimeters, and I'm just going to do it over here. And let's just say for the sake of discussion, uh, the length of our major axis was 10 centimeters. And again, these units could be anything, they're going to cancel out. So eccentricity of an ellipse is just going to be a number. And so this one equals 0 0.5. And that would be the eccentricity of our ellipse. And really, that's all Kepler was saying is that planetary orbits are elliptical. All right, let's look at Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law. And we're going to be working on his second and third law in class this week. What he said here, an orbit, a planet's orbit, sweeps out equal area of space in equal amounts of time. An orbit sweeps out equal areas of space areas of space in equal amounts of time. Oops, equal amounts of time. So Kepler's second law. An orbit sweeps out equal areas of space in equal amounts of time. And let's take a look at this. And we'll, again, we're going to draw our ellipse here. Probably not a very good one, but we'll give it a whirl. Oh, that one's not too bad. And let's just say our, our sun. This is our sun right here. Well, as a planet's moving around the sun, let's say it's moving in this direction. And remember, gravity is the overriding force in the universe. And so as the planet is moving away from the sun, if you think about it, what's going to happen to the acceleration due to gravity? It's going to start to slow down. And then gravity grabs it before it can take off. Because again, according to Newton's first law of motion, it wants to keep going in a straight line at a constant speed. But as it almost gets away, gravity pulls it back in and that gravitational force becomes stronger and stronger as you decrease the distance. And so the planet's going a little bit faster as it approaches the perihelion, and as it moves away, then it starts slowing down, and it reaches that aphelion. It's at its slowest point, and then gravity pulls it in. So what Kepler really said was that what ends up happening Let's just say this is an equal amount of time as it approaches its perihelion. This area in here, and again, this is just a diagram here. This area is going to equal that area. Notice the distance covered on the ellipse itself isn't as far. This is a, a shorter shorter distance this one covers the planet would cover greater distance here and again we're really looking at gravity really has its influence here it speeds up that planet so it's gonna it's almost like it's falling if you will so as it's moving here it's going pretty fast 
and it goes away here it's moving pretty slow and what, he, what did Kepler end up saying was that these two areas are equal he said they sweep out equal areas of space in equal amount of time so same same time was spent going from here to here Let's see if I can get it so this so this time let's see if I can get a different color in here this time and, we'll, and this time between the between those two lines those times are equal let's just call this uh, time one time two so he's saying time one equals time two and he's also saying the area and we'll call this area two and we can call this over here area one again he's also saying area one equals area two and we're going to do a a lab activity in class on this so that kind of wraps wraps this one up and uh, if you have questions uh, you know don't be afraid to ask in class and but that's the big thing remember on uh, on Kepler's uh, second law of motion and it really it has to do with that whole idea of gravitational force between two objects as the objects get closer to, to one another that gravitational force does increase and so that will be it for today and we will continue later